First off, I'm aware I've done a run of three weeks of playwriting tips. It's been a little while since I've done a performance analysis, but I am going to see two things this week. So the next couple of weeks will be taken up by performance analysis. So I thought I'd do a fourth entry into my playwriting tips videos this week. We're gonna look at the work of Sarah Kane and more specifically, her first play, Blasted. Now, usually the discussion of a play wouldn't invite any discussion as to the life of its author. However, I think the context today of Sarah Kane's severe depression, which eventually led to her death by suicide, is unavoidable. So consider this a bit of a trigger warning that the discussion of this play will necessitate talking about war and conflict and sexual assault. So this is just a bit of a heads up for that. If you decide not to watch because of that, then I completely understand and I will look forward to seeing you next week. What I particularly want to avoid is any kind of romanticizing of the tortured artist figure. It's undoubtable that Sarah Kane's severe depression gave her a unique view of the world which informed her plays. However, when discussing such work, I think it's key to not over-romanticise such things and to acknowledge that though some artists have had severe mental health troubles, it's a sad bit of context which sits alongside the work rather than something which I think we can glorify in making that work possible. So, with that out of the way, let's take a look at Blasted. Blasted is initially a dialogue between the characters Ian and Kate, set in a hotel described as so expensive it could be anywhere in the world. Ian is a misogynistic, homophobic, racist journalist, and Kate, a young woman who he's invited into this hotel room in order to attempt to seduce her. Kate turns down these sexual advances, but when she suffers an epileptic fit, he sexually assaults her. It's at this point at which the play takes a turn for the somewhat unexpected, as the door swings open, revealing a armed soldier. He comes into the hotel room and recounts to Ian some of the horrific crimes which he has both witnessed and taken part in, at which point we learn that Kate has escaped out of the bathroom window. With the two of them alone in the hotel room, the soldier proceeds to rape Ian before sucking out his eyeballs. The soldier then takes his own life, and as the play continues, we essentially see it become relocated from a cushioned hotel room into a war zone. A mortar bomb lands in the hotel room and blasts a wall away. Kate returns having saved a baby. It is, by all accounts, a very dark, harrowing play. On its premiere, critics were shocked by the brazen, explicit imagery of Blasted. The Daily Mail went as far as to describe it as a disgusting feast of filth. Others, I think, have overly poeticised its explicitness. In many ways, this is a very raw play, and I think it shows many of the signs of being a dramatist's first work, in that it shows a very exciting disregard for established theatrical conventions, but is also somewhat muddy in what it's trying to say. Say. In being quite so blunt though, I think that Blasted opens up an interesting conversation as to themes and imagery within playwriting. The aim of any writer of fiction is to facilitate the creation of connections in a reader or an audience's mind. Through the subtle art of suggestion, they can suggest to us that one thing might lead to another, or, in many cases, that one thing is like another. And it's the subtlety that is both the key to success and the challenge here. If we imagine a continuum, on one end of which sits a play which seems quite overcooked and overdone and obvious, and on the other end seems almost incomprehensible in its muddiness and confusion, the ideal play will sit somewhere in the middle. We can see this most clearly in some allegorical works. For example, Arthur Miller's The Crucible doesn't make a single mention of the House Committee on Un-American Activities, yet to a contemporary audience it was clear that that was what it was about. The same is true of Animal Farm. By only making these suggestions, rather than making these connections clear on the page or on the stage, a writer plays upon our vanity, imploring us that it was us, the audience, that made those connections, not them the writer. And it's not just the case in allegorical works, we can see in many stage plays where two or more characters who initially seem to have very little in common slowly uncover that which they share. For example, the two characters in Jack Thorne's adaptation of Let the Right One In, 
or the miners and policemen in the musical version of Billy Elliot. In Blasted, the approach is even more clear than this. In many ways, it is a deconstruction in the Derridean tradition. In short, deconstruction is the idea of taking two themes or ideas or concepts which might initially seem either very separate or completely opposed to one another, and pointing out the things which they have in common. A prime example is Derrida's essay Racism's Last Word, in which he looks at the response of many Western countries to South Africa's apartheid regime, and points out many of the hypocrisies which exist due to many of these structures which enabled such a discriminatory system being either formed or inspired by the English or French or Spanish colonial systems and also the Jim Crow laws in America. In Blasted, Sarah Kane brings together both rape as an individual act between two people in a luxurious capitalist western hotel and rape as a weaponized act of war. At the time of the play's writing, conflict was raging in Bosnia. It led to an attempted ethnic cleansing and the rape of an estimated between 12,000 and 20,000 people. The international community responded with outrage and although they were slow to act, sanctions were eventually followed by the deployment of UN peacekeeping troops. It is not a physical response that Kane responds to in Blasted, however, but a representational one. My reading of Blasted, which is certainly just one among many, is a critique of the potential of news media, both on television and in print media, to display such horrific acts as were happening in Bosnia at the time when Kane was writing the play as happening over there. It is an attempt to belie the idea that such acts are geographically limited. And it is precisely through the destruction of geographical distance that Kane also closes a gap in meaning. This is something well referred to in Dan Rebellato's article from State of the Nation to Globalization, which I'll link to below. By opening the play in such a luxurious location of the hotel room, Room, Kane suggests a world of a play in which wealth insulates from harm, in which such horrific acts which will later take place within the play would be unthinkable. On the entrance of the soldier, however, Kane suggests that such horrific acts that we are used to seeing happen over there can also happen here. First off, Kane contests the idea that there is any difference between Ian's rape of Kate within the closed door of a luxurious hotel room and rape as a weaponized act of war in Bosnia. She belies the notion that the thread count of the sheets might make any difference whatsoever. She also suggests that living in a society where one's body can feel constantly at threat, though a political state of war might not exist, it is possible to feel equally besieged. Furthermore, there is an element of unrefined anger in the play. Ian's crimes towards the beginning of the play do not go unpunished. He is brutally raped and maimed by the soldier on his entrance. And I think in this there is a cry for retribution towards people who commit such acts. But also there's the fact that in the real world, Ian's wealth might well insulate him from paying for those actions. And so I think there's a real disdain in the play that while horrific people might be able to insulate themselves from paying for such actions through being so rich, much better people are stuck in situations in Bosnia where they find themselves being maimed as such. Many plays within the history of playwriting have sought to bring together seemingly distant or opposing ideas ideas and find out what they have in common. Blasted is not a perfect play, it is rough and ready in many ways, but I do think it opens up an interesting conversation about the key features of theme and imagery in playwriting. However brutal and uncompromising the images that Kane invites upon the stage in Blasted, none of the readings or suggestions as to what those might mean are explicit in any way throughout the play. Though in its imagery it may be very blunt, Kane invites us to find the deeper meaning within the play, therefore playing upon our intellectual vanity and also allowing us to feel like we've made those connections instead of her. Thank you very much for watching this video. As I said at the beginning, uh, the next couple of weeks I'm going to be doing some performance analyses. I'm seeing a couple of works uh, towards the end of this week. Um, if you have enjoyed, then please do subscribe or give it a thumbs up. If there's any playwrights you'd like me to look at, uh, then do leave a comment below. Thank you very much and have a great week.